Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this beam using direct stiffness matrix method. Before analyzing, let us see the beam one time. In this beam, there are two spans, span AB and span BC. In the span AB, we have a point load 72 kN and it is acting in the center. In the span BC, we have uniformly distributed load 36 kN per meter and it is acting for the full span. Length of the span AB is 10 meter and the length of the span BC is 8 meter. In the points A, B and C, we have roller supports. Now let us find the fixed end moments and the vertical reactions. First, let us find them in the span AB. In the span AB, we have a point load 72 kN. It is acting in the center. The formulas to find the fixed end moments are minus WL upon 8 and positive WL upon 8. Here W is 72 and L is 10. After the calculation, we are getting M of AB and M of BA. Now let us find the vertical reactions RA and RB1. In the span AB, we have symmetrical loading. This point load is acting in the center. So we can easily find RA and RB1. For that, we have to divide the load 72 by 2. When we do that, we are getting 36 kN. Now let us find the fixed end moments and reactions in the span BC. In the span BC, we have uniformly distributed load 36 kN per meter. It is acting for the full span. The formulas to find the fixed end moments are minus WL square upon 12 and positive WL square upon 12. Here W is 36 and L is 8. After the calculation, we are getting M of BC and M of CB. Now we have to find the vertical reactions RB2 and RC. For that, we have to multiply 36 with the distance 8 and then divide that by 2. When we do that, we are getting RB2 and RC as 144 kN. In the stiffness matrix method, in the case of beams, we have to check the number of supports in which a slope can occur. In this beam, in the points A, B and C, we have roller supports. So in these points, there will be slope. So the kinematic indeterminacy of the beam is 3. In the point A, we have theta A. In the point B, we have theta B. And in the point C, we have theta C. Now let us make the coordinates diagram. We know that in this analysis, there are three coordinates. They are in the points A, B and C. The coordinates should be made in the clockwise direction. We know the formula to find the slope values. Delta matrix is equal to K matrix inverse into P matrix minus PL matrix. In this analysis, there are three coordinates. So inside the delta matrix, PL matrix and P matrix, we will have three values. The size of the stiffness matrix will be 3 cross 3. That means inside the matrix, we will have three rows and three columns. In this formula, now let us find the PL matrix. First, let us find P1L. Our first coordinate is in the point A. In the point A, we have calculated a fixed end moment that is M of AB. Let us apply that. Let us find P2L. Our second coordinate is in the point B. In the point B, we have found two fixed end moments M of BA and M of BC. We have to add both of them 
after adding we are getting minus 1 or 2 now let us find p3l our third coordinate is in the point c in the point c we have found a fixed end moment m of cb let us apply that in this formula now let us find the p matrix our coordinates are in the points a b and c in these points there are no moments so p1 p2 and p3 will be zero now in this formula we are going to find the stiffness matrix before making the stiffness matrix we have to form element matrices for the spans this is the element stiffness matrix for the spans we have to memorize this matrix first let us make the stiffness matrix in the span a b length of the span a b is 10 so instead of l let us apply 10 from this matrix we have to take out stiffness matrix elements our first coordinate is in the point A. In the point A, we have the moment MAB. In this matrix, MAB represents the second column and the second row. So, let us denote the second column and the second row as 1. Our second coordinate is in the point B. In the point B, we have the moment MBA. MBA represents the fourth row and the fourth column. So let us denote the fourth row and the fourth column as 2. Now let us strike out unwanted elements. We do not want RA. So let us strike out the first column and the first row. We do not want RB1. So let us strike out the third row and the third column. Now we have four members remaining. This is K11. This is K12. This is K21. This is K22. Now let us make the element stiffness matrix for the span BC. Length of BC is 8. So instead of L, let us apply 8 in all of the members. In the second coordinate, we have the moment MBC. MBC represents the second column and the second row. So let us name the second row and the second column as 2. In the third coordinate, we have the moment MCB. MCB represents the fourth column and the fourth row. So let us name the fourth column and the fourth row as 3. Now let us strike out unwanted rows and columns. We do not want RB2. So let us strike out the first column and the first row. We do not want RC. So let us strike out the third row and the third column. This element is K22. This element is K23. This element is K32. This element is K33. We have found the stiffness matrix elements from both of the spans. Now let us form the stiffness matrix. K22 we have found in both of the spans. We have to add both of them. 0 0.4 plus 0 0.5. We will get 0 0.9. K11 is 0 0.4, K12 is 0 0.2, there is no value for K13, so we can apply 0, K21 is 0 0.2, we have already found K22 which is 0 0.9, K23 is 0 0.25, for K31 there is no value, so we can apply 0, K32 is 0 0.25, and K33 is 0 0.5. In the system displacement formula, we have found the stiffness matrix, the P matrix and the PL matrix. Let us apply all the values.
we can take EI outside. We know that EI inverse is equal to 1 by EI. For this matrix, we have to find the inverse. We can apply all of the values in the calculator and get the inverse. If you do not know how to find the inverse of a 3 by 3 matrix in the calculator, see the description below. There is a link. You can click the link and watch the video for getting ideas how to find the inverse of a 3 by 3 matrix in the calculator. I have used the calculator and found the inverse. We can add these two matrices. After adding, we are getting these. Then we have to multiply these two matrices. We have to multiply all the rows with the column. You can see the multiplication here. Finally, we are getting the answers. We know that in this problem, the system displacements or the slopes, which we found finally. Now let us find the final movements and reactions in the span AB. In this formula, first let us apply the element matrix for the span AB. Then let us make the displacement matrix. In the span AB, we have the first and second coordinates. In the first coordinate, we have the moment MAB. For that, we have to apply the value of theta A. In the second coordinate, we have the moment MBA. For that, we have to apply the value of theta b. For the remaining terms, we can apply 0. For this matrix, we have to apply the fixed end movements and the reactions which we have calculated initially. After the calculation, we are getting the reactions and the movements. Now, let us find the final movements and the reactions in the span BC. For the span BC, we have formed the element stiffness matrix. Let us apply that. Let us see how to make the displacement matrix. In the span BC, we have the second and third coordinates. In the second coordinate, we have the moment MBC. For that, we have to apply the value of theta B. In the third coordinate, we have the moment MCB. For that, we have to apply the value of theta c. For the remaining terms, we can apply 0. In this matrix, we have to apply the fixed end movements and the reactions. After the calculation, we are getting the reactions and the movements in the span BC. In this analysis, we have calculated the movements and the reactions. To get RB, we have to add RB1 and RB2. After adding, we are getting RB. Here, I have made the shear force diagram. Now, we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.